Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you're new here then welcome. I hope you're all good. I appreciate there's going to be so many people that are watching this vlog in particular because of the nature of the vlog that don't watch my channel usually. Like I'm sure you'll just come across this vlog because of what you're searching and doing a bit of research. So for those of you, I won't babble too much, but for those of you who are regular people of the vlog gang, then I hope this video explains why there's been like a little three week absence here on my YouTube channel. But if you haven't guessed by this title, I recently had cosmetic surgery and I had my old breast implants changed so I had breast augmentation when I was 18 years old and I'm now 30 so I recently three weeks ago actually now got my implants changed my old ones swapped for some new ones had like a little adjustment as well along with that surgery but we'll come back to that in a second but yeah I just really wanted to vlog this experience because obviously back when I was 18 I didn't have a YouTube channel but when I had my rhinoplasty done a couple of years ago, three years ago now, four years ago, I vlogged it and I know so many people found those videos helpful so I really really wanted to do that again because I feel like this will be helpful to you whether you are having a breast augmentation for the first time or whether you are like me and having like revision surgery. So yeah I was 18 when I got my first breast augmentation and it was about time that I went out with the old and in with the new and had some new implants. Now I generally think that they say 10 years is like your it's kind of like a warranty that you get on breast implants or it was back then anyway. I think it might be a little bit more now or like there kind of isn't really a time span like there used to be, but it definitely used to be 10 years. So at the 10 year mark, which for me was two years ago, I had an ultrasound on my implants just to check like the quality of them, if there was any issues, any leakages, any other issues really because of my implants. And I was actually all okay. And to be honest, even though they were old, like 10 years old at that time, I still absolutely loved how they looked. So for me, I just kept them as they were. Now it's only in the last couple of years, I noticed that the quality of the implant as such had started like declining. And what I mean by that is there was a lot of rippling of my implant, a lot on the like outer of my implant. And it kind of looks like dimples when you're relaxed. And also if they're like warm, like if you're relaxed or if your breast tissue is warm, they would dimple and often create shadows. And it got to a point where you could see it. I mean, I never wear a bra, but you could see it through my like t-shirt. If I was wearing like a high neck t-shirt, you could actually see the dimples happening. It's called rippling in an implant, but it kind of happened a lot more over the last couple of years, which honestly was just completely due to the age of my implant. Like I had a good run. I know so many people who've had them changed after even like six years for that reason. So I had a great run, like from 18, to 30 to have the one implant I feel like that was pretty good going so it was at that time literally two years ago that I started looking into what would happen for me now if I was to have revision surgery have these implants changed for some new ones and that's kind of where I got the ball rolling now just want to point out that I have done so much cosmetic surgery research in the past, obviously for my first BA, also for my rhinoplasty, and I also worked in the private surgery field for seven, nearly eight years um, before I went like full-time self-employed doing social media and stuff. So I know a lot of the ins and outs when it comes to surgery, what you should be looking for in a consultant and surgeons. When I tell you it literally was a process for like 18 months, two years, 18 months, two years. I had consultations on Harley Street, I had consultations literally everywhere at like the old place that I went to. And it's really about how you feel um, with your consultant, if that makes sense. And also when you're having revision surgery, you wanna make sure you've seen examples of what that consultant can do, what that surgeon can do. And the surgeon that I chose and the place that I went to, which obviously you're about to see everything, really hit the nail on the head with me with how they get the results of people who've already got implants, they get the results of what they want and like how they want them to look different. I saw so many examples and I actually went for my first consultation with the people who I went ahead and had surgery with over a year ago. Like this has been going back and forth because of like timings and stuff for ages and they've been so patient and so amazing. So I went to Pall Mall, privately owned hospital and it's in Newton the Willows, which is up north here. I think they've got clinics in Manchester, maybe in Liverpool, they've got actual clinics dotted around, but I've just always had my consultations and obviously you have your surgery done at Newton and Willows as well. So I've just always been there. It's kind of just under an hour from me. And the surgeon I had was Mr. Hussain. And again, purely because of examples of work that I've seen where he's taken implants out and put new ones in. And also I had a certain look that I wanted to achieve, which I'll talk you through. And just him being completely confident that he was gonna be able to do that. And also, Obviously every single decision when it comes to cosmetic surgery is completely yours, but 
I felt like I had this big minefield of like thoughts and he really helped me like come to terms with what it is that I'm actually trying to do going forward for the next surgery. I saw him for the first time like a year ago and then I was supposed to have my surgery towards the end of last year, like November time. Then I ended up having a really busy end to the year. And then I was looking at around February time at the start of this year, but I was actually going to the Maldives for my 30th in March. And if it was just like a chill holiday, then I would have been fine. But I was actually going on a diving trip. I went free diving with sharks. So probably not the best thing to do like four weeks post-op. So I thought it's just best if I wait. And then I actually went ahead with my surgery on the 9th of May, which obviously you're about to see. We've got quite a long vlog incoming of everything from like getting ready for my surgery, the surgery day, and also the three weeks afterwards up until this point. So the main reasons of why I wanted to change I've pretty much just spoken about, kind of just like the way they were looking, the age of the implant, and also for me in my head, I, having done my research this time around, it came to my attention that they don't even make the implant anymore that I had in my body. So for me, I'm like, right, okay, if they don't even make that anymore, because obviously technology now is so much more advanced and new things get made all the time in the surgery world, I wanna have something new in my body. I don't wanna have something that they don't even make anymore on the market in my body. So that was just kind of the nail on the head. And also I'm 30 and I just thought, let's just get it out of the way now. Now it is a bit of an odd situation because if I was my age and I had a partner, which I don't, I'm single as fuck for anybody who doesn't know that, um, I probably would have waited until I had children. And I kind of had that discussion with Mr. Hussein because you know, I was 29, starting to become a bit unhappy with how my old implants were looking. But obviously your boobs, because they fill with milk and all of the other ins and outs of scientific coolness of being pregnant, which I don't know, they change obviously after pregnancy. Like I'm fully aware of that. However, I'm not even in a situation, like I'm so single, it's not even like I've met somebody and like could potentially be having children the next couple of years in a relationship and thinking about having children. If that was my situation, I just wanna say I probably would have waited just because why not? They were going to change anyway. I might as well just wait until after those changes have happened. But that wasn't my situation. My initial thought was, so just to put it into perspective for those of you that will want to know about sizing and stuff, my original implants were 415cc and I loved the way they looked to the eye, other than obviously the aging of the implant and the rippling and stuff. For those, the majority of those 10, 12 years, literally loved them. I loved how they fit in my body. They were literally, well, do you think about it? I had them since I was 18. Basically grew up with them, like into my adulthood. Like I don't really remember my body before them, to be honest. So I said to Mr. Hussain when I first saw him, like, I really like the way that they look. And I am kind of thinking, I'm in two minds about doing like a like for like swap or potentially going smaller because obviously now I'll hopefully have these into like my mid forties. And they were big boobs, like lovely big boobs, which is what I wanted but I didn't know whether I should go for something that was just a bit more grown up. Like they were very, I was over the muscle originally. So they were very stuck on. Could literally see the outline, almost get my fingers behind the implant because they were over the muscle. Now I spoke to him about, he was, he basically was like, look, let's just start from scratch. What is it that you want to achieve? And what I said to him was, I wanted them to look and appear more natural because I feel like they don't sit flat from like my collarbone down. Like there's no smoothness there. It's very like, okay, there's the implant. But I do also like the size of them. And obviously having gotten to know him over the year that I was basically on and off seeing him um, for consultations and stuff, he did say to me, look, if I was you, well, not if I was you, but he just said like, just think about whether you would miss them if you were to like drastically reduce the size of the implant. So say I did reduce the size of the implant, go for something smaller, I would have required an uplift. So obviously the procedure would have been a bit different. It would have been anchor scars like around the nipple and down. Obviously an uplift and a reaugmentation is more recovery as well. But he was so confident that he could give me the look that I was describing by putting implants of the same size, pretty much I went from 415 to 420. 45, there's literally nothing in it. Um, CC, just a couple of grams literally. But he was adamant that he could give me the look that I was describing to him by just literally switching from over the muscle to under the muscle. But he also gave me a pocket adjustment. Now by doing the pocket adjustment, taking away the capsulectomy, which is scar tissue of the old implant, it allowed him to get my implant to sit tighter to my chest. So they actually look and feel smaller now. And right now they're obviously still swollen as well because I'm only three weeks post-op, but 
he absolutely smashed it like he knew what I was trying to describe I like the size I just kind of wanted them to sit a little bit differently look a lot more natural and just have longevity in how they look because of like me getting older if that makes sense and honestly he he just knew exactly what he was doing just by doing it this way by going from over to under having the capsulectomy and also having a pocket adjustment it basically has made my boobs look so different. You will see at my three week follow up appointment, which I have filmed that I'm like, they look so different. And like, I just had it in my head that they weren't gonna look that different. It's weird, but they just look incredible. Like I'm so, so happy with my results and so, so glad that I vlogged this process for you guys, anybody going through it the first time to see what it's like in 10, 12 years time, or for anyone who's in a similar situation to me and wants confidence in knowing that it's gonna be fine if you go through it all again. Like for me, I loved how they looked. So it was like risky in my head to think, God, am I fixing something that isn't broken here? But I just knew the implants were old and needed changing. So yeah, that's what I had done. I had the implants removed. I had a capsulectomy, which is getting rid of the old scar tissue. I think there's a clip where you see my old implants and the scar tissue that they removed and it looks like little, little clots, little lumps almost. Um, and then I had a pocket adjustment. So obviously the pectoral muscle and everything was adjusted. And some of the, in, there's a lot of internal stitching as well, where they've been able to get the implant to sit in a certain way to kind of give it a lifted look so a pocket adjustment and then new implants in and I had that done on the 9th of May and I'm now officially in recovery I'm feeling like human again now um I'm still completely out of exercise that's been the hardest thing for me I am somebody that weight trains uh five times a week I also do pilates and hot yoga now the pilates and hot yoga is going to be something that can come back into my life a lot sooner than the weight training but weight training has been my life for a long time and it's honestly wild what it does for my mental sanity because I'm only three weeks now of no training and knowing that with weight training I'm at least going to have to do 10 or 12 weeks off it's crazy it's going so slow I'm hoping maybe after my six or eight week follow up, he will give me the go ahead to do some like lower body, low impact Pilates, yoga, just anything. But now that I'm up and about again, I'm getting like my steps here and I've got two dogs. So I'm like walking them and trying to just like manage it in other ways. But yeah, I think that's something to consider if you're a gym goer is like you do have to have a lot of time off. And honestly, it's so important. You'll hear me go on about the recovery and not just because I've been, you know, a cosmetic surgery veteran, but because I've somebody who's worked in the field if you return back to the gym, especially weightlifting too soon, like your your under the muscle surgery is literally muscle, it's pec muscle, you're gonna fuck it up. Like you literally have to go with your advice of your surgeon, of your recovery, and just stick into what they know best because they do know best. So it's just one of those things, like it's been quite jarring for me mentally, not being able to, you know, go to the gym and the first week of recovery, like being bed bound, I really struggled because I've got a really active lifestyle. But you know what it is, what it is, it's 10 weeks out of my whole life. I just wanted to put this vlog out there for anybody that needs the info. So anybody has any questions, then you can pop them down below because I will be in the comments answering questions. I still answer questions now on my rhinoplasty vlog in the comments, like four years on, three, four years on. So I'll try my best to be responding to questions in there as well. But I'll put my Instagram handle and everything on screen. I think that you want to send me that site longer or anything privately, then obviously you're more than welcome to message me on there as well. Something I want to add before we get into the vlog because I know this is a question I'm going to get asked. Back when I first got my breast augmentation done, I think I paid 3,695. Now that was 2011, maybe 2012, 2012, I think I turned 18. Um, so, you know, inflation is quite literally a thing. So I think now if you have a breast augmentation from the offset with Pall Mall, I think it's from 4995, depending on like what it is that you need, implant size, obviously. If you are looking to have something done like what I've had done, an explant, a capsulectomy, a pocket adjustment and new implants, I paid, it was 9995, so just under 10,000. It was priced that way because of Obviously I had the capsulectomy, which is removal of old scar tissue. Some people may not have that, but I think they do do it for a lot of uh, revision surgery. I had the pocket adjustment as well, which I think added on like 900 or like a thousand pounds. So again, not everybody needs that. So it totally depends. I think the ballpark figure is great if you're having a breast augmentation for the first time. If you're having 
um, revision surgery, like a reaugmentation. I think it just completely depends on obviously what you need. But anyway, I'm gonna get into it. You're about to see me have my breast implants changed after 12 years. And I just really, really hope this is an informative vlog. It is Friday the 19th of April. I was gonna say March, it definitely isn't. I've just pulled up to the Pall Mall Hospital in Newton La Willows. So today at two o'clock in a couple of minutes, I have got my consultation with Mr. Hussain just to go over some final bits before surgery. And then I've also got my pre-op today as well. I managed to kill two birds with one stone because it just saves me two trips. It's like 50 minutes away from me. I think this is the last time I'll be driving myself here because the next time I think I'll be coming here will be on the day of my surgery and obviously I won't be driving myself. I've just had a decaf latte, ice latte. It was nice while I left the house and now it is raining. So I've got my documents here that I've had from previous consultation. From previous consultation. And then these are actually my old documents from when I had my first breast augmentation 12 long years ago. Um, but I'm gonna head in now because I don't wanna be late. I'll just have a sip of Diet Coke actually. This is literally, let me just turn you around managed to get a space right outside this is literally it it's so handy i know it's not you know everybody's option but for me i did the same when i got my boobs on the first time and also when i got my rhinoplasty come in to have your consults if it's available at the place you'll be having your surgery it just gets you so familiar with it and it kind of takes away the whole like new place nerves on the day of surgery so i really recommend doing that um if you have got the option but anyway let's go in and see what mr hussein has to say and see what the nurse says as well with regards to my pre-op i've got so many questions that i need to ask about like stopping taking my pill um and a few other bits as well um because my surgery dates come around so quick and i've been so busy it's literally just been my birthday this is going to be going out obviously way after but i've been like here there and i've had my 30th birthday so yeah i need to make sure that i ask all the things that i want to ask but anyway let's head in I think, uh, what's what it called? CC did 0425? Yeah, so I think, yeah, so it would like uh, to have a larger implant rather than a small implant with mm -hmm. up Because I can't try you with sizes now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's So then it's just, it's a bit of, so yeah, so Well, I think, I don't want them to look massively bigger, so I think 425 would be a right, good. Okay. Is it okay if I look today? Just yeah, to remind yeah, absolutely. Myself, yeah. So I'll get one of the girls to come in and yeah. we'll have a look again. So, yeah, the scar is probably going to be higher on the yeah. breast. So I'm not going to make a new scar. I'll go in through the same one. So you'll essentially just be taking some of the skin away. Yeah, so it's yeah. just as in what's it called? It's just literally the scar is about a centimeter longer than what you already have. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I did go for the uplift, it would have been like an anchor scar. Yes, then that's an anchor scar. Yeah. Okay, so you. yeah, so I think that's the thing. Yes, you, it's everything is a trade off. Yeah. Everything is a trade. There's always something. Yeah. yeah so I know what you mean. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of when you go for a small implant, it gives you a bit of loose skin, then you may need tighten. Yeah. If you go for a bigger implant, I mean, it may fill out the skin a bit more. Yeah. Obviously, the bigger the implant, it will fill the skin. Yeah, more. of course. And that's the implant, smaller the implant. You're going for sort of like a moderate increase. Yeah. So it's going from 410 to 425. Now, in real terms, uh, what that means is in, in between the two implants, if I was to measure, you're looking at about a few millimeter difference. You're not yeah, looking at a big it's not difference. Like, it? It's not a lot at all. You're on top of the muscle yeah, right yeah. now, yeah? So you put your hands on your hips, press them. Because of the uh, capsule that you've got and because of the location of the implants and so on, this is going to be a, a bit more of a, a challenge in terms of getting the look if absolutely right. Underneath the muscle always sits a little bit higher on your chest and yeah. then it does drop down. Uh, you've got enough of a gap in between your uh, nipple, high enough above the fold for me to think not that you don't need a lift per se. Does it matter that, because I've taken this pill for a long time, I've not had a period in a long time, because I take it continuously. I don't Is it an estrogen pill or what's it? It's the estrogen. mini pill, so it's, um, I can't think, it's called, the brand is Cerezet, but obviously that's not the medical name. So that's good then. If it's only for progesterone, then yeah. it's the estrogen which I wear in yeah. for giving you clots. It's what I used to take, like the Yasmin yeah. pill, so, okay. Fab. So I don't need to stop that then. Yeah. yeah. But actually, surgery-wise, when I'm there, I'll yeah. be nervous. Obviously, you'll know when you see it, but exactly. it's handy to know beforehand. Yeah. Okay, fab. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm out. I, after I saw Mr. Hussain, you could probably tell we're a bit like back and forth in at the minute about implant size. He's so good at explaining things. I honestly, in my experience of not only being a cosmetic surgery veteran, but also um, having worked in the field for as long as I did, like how you feel around the consultant, around your surgeon is so important. And I've literally been seeing him now because it's been going back and forth, like with dates, as I've already explained. Um, for a while I've seen him so many times and like even all the girls here like the staff here are so nice they make me feel so at ease but 
around him when they're so knowledgeable and not only so knowledgeable because obviously all consultants are but have like the patience and time to explain things to you even though i've asked like a million times like the same question um but yeah we're going back and forth on implant size because i currently have 410 cc which cc is basically grams um and i'm i was thinking of it's so weird i've done like a full circle because my original 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 thought with this surgery was a smaller implant because these have you know been big for a long time but i am used to them so he's like you don't want to go like much smaller have an uplift and go through all of that which is quite an extensive surgery for you to just be like oh i actually really liked my boobs as they were because i do like my boobs but unfortunately the implants are just 12 years old and do need replacing so i've done full circle because the original plan was potentially like an uplift and a smaller implant to tighten the skin go through the nipple move the nipple maybe if it didn't sit right on the different implant to now just doing almost like a like for like um they gave me a post-surgery bra so i went in for my pre-op afterwards the nurse is so nice i've seen her a few times i've got a mac on post-surgery bra i've actually got a nude one of these at home and like a waist compression as well to help with like swelling like of the body um any like trap fluids and stuff i've used mac on for the longest time like literally from like my first surgery i absolutely love their compression garments their post-surgery stuff is just the best um so they give you one which is amazing because god back when i first got my surgery done it was like an extra charge for things like that so they there was one included but they also do have a pal mile discount code as well if you want to buy any additionally but i've got two so i should be absolutely fine um but the plan is for the first week you keep it on keep it dry obviously you can have a bath up to your waist but you just have to like be careful when you're washing your armpits and stuff you've got to keep it dry before your one week post-op um appointment with the nurse where it'll be taken off and your bandages will be taken off or changed i don't have to come off my pill which is great news for me i've not had a period in a long time and i thought they might take me off the pill but because there's no estrogen in the pill that i take they don't need to because there's no risk of blood clots with the pill that i take so that's absolutely fabulous news for me because it means i don't have to have a period over the next couple of weeks as well as prepping myself for surgery it is a busy day for preparations this is like my last full day it's the tuesday obviously my surgery is thursday this is my last full day because i have plans all day tomorrow with my best friend which i don't actually know what they are yet basically it was supposed to be something that she planned for my 30th last month and then because of the weather she had to reschedule it and because we're staying together tomorrow night anyway because she's i'm staying at hers the night before she's taken me to hospital she planned it for tomorrow so today is like my last day of getting shit done so having my nails taken off this morning which honestly call me pathetic but it's one of the worst parts about having surgery if you get your nails i have bad if you get your nails regularly done then you will just know they're going to be going straight back on anyway so i just need to suck it up i mean obviously when it comes to like the medical side it's just something that they have to because you have like the little finger thing put on and it's hard to get a reading um over like biab or acrylic or even just gel or polish and also one of the like signs of your like blood circulation not being great or whatever post-surgery is like your nails being a funny colour so it's for the greater good you know it's it's a needs must situation but I just hate it all right I am a girl and that's that but anyway let's go and get my nails taken off <laughs> so I've just been to Iceland and picked up some lazy dinners for the next few days because obviously I'm not going to be in any mood to cook um until at least next week so this is what i plan on having for dinner these are just the my protein um ones from iceland they're frozen so super handy i mean i'm basically a one-man band even though my brother and my sister-in-law will be like in and out i don't want anyone to have to do too much for me because of who i'm as a person so i've got some just like lunch I just picked up i'm obsessed with these so easy you know just things that are going to be so easy for me to fit and then tonight i'm gonna pre-make some like little salad bowls for myself so i'm gonna do some like seasoned chicken and make some salad so i'm gonna like meal prep my lunch out. and then for dinner i will just have these it is the evening please look at the state of my bed right now i'm just packing my bag um i've been out for dinner with my friends this evening and now i'm just getting my hospital bag ready hang on let me just turn friends down because nobody needs that so i've written a list of things that i need so we've got pyjamas, dressing gowns, slippers, toiletries, post-surgery bras and socks, glasses and contact lenses, knickers and socks, tracksuit crocs, pouch for jewellery. So I, if I didn't have plans tomorrow then I wouldn't wear my jewellery to the hospital but that's what the pouch is. I'm just going to take one of these organza bags because I'm spending obviously the day with my friend tomorrow and then going to the hospital from hers. I need to take something to put it all in so I'm just going to pack that. 
Um, I've just got all of my documents and stuff here. So slippers. I'm actually going to take slippers and Crocs because even though I'm going to actually go to the hospital in trainers, I tell you to pack slippers just for when you're going about the hospital for a wee or whatever after your surgery or before your surgery and in case you are kept in overnight. And then Crocs are just handy because it's just so much easier to slip on and off when I'm actually leaving the hospital to come home rather than tying up laces. So they're going to go in. And then dressing gown again because you will be in your hospital gown um, pretty much the majority of the day. They tell you to like pack a dressing gown just so you're comfortable. Again, if you are a bit cold or if you want to go somewhere like to the toilet or whatever or get up and have a little mooch around, then they just say to pop your dressing gown in. And when you're like walking down for like surgery and stuff like that as well. Now, I would love to take this really chunky one, <laughs> but I think it's a bit dramatic. So I've actually got this one that I've just washed because um, I just want it to be fresh. It's just like a thin one. It's still like soft and warm, but it's just a thin one. So pyjamas, this is just my little pre-surgery ritual. I always treat myself to some new pyjamas. How cute are these? I picked them up in OS today. So I'm just gonna pack those. Now I did actually get the um, long trouser and the shorts as well, which I'll show you in a second, but I think I'll just take the long trouser with me because I don't know I'm gonna want the shorts while I'm in the hospital. This is what the shorts look like. How cute. So I'll just pop those in my little pyjama drawer because, like I said, I don't think, oh, maybe I should take them actually, because if they do end up keeping me in overnight, I'm not going to want to sleep in like long pants. I'll take them, just in case. Just in case, they're better than not having them. And then this is the pyjama top. Like I needed another pair of pyjamas. I did not, but like I say, pre-surgery ritual. Then, to come home, if I'm actually well enough and feeling okay enough to get changed out of my pyjamas and into a tracksuit, I'm going to show my tracksuit on. Obviously just tracksuit buttons. And then, top tip, this is honestly something that I forgot the first time around. Top tip, and this is something that I've seen, uh, something that I've seen a mistake that I've seen so many people make. If you're going to take a tracksuit or whatever to leave the hospital in, or if you want one for like lounging around in, in the few days afterwards, please, please remember zip ups zip ups are going to save your life i've got so many zip up hoodies especially in my gym wardrobe which are going to be super handy but you can't lift your arms up think of it this way anything that uses your pectoral muscle even if you don't realize it's being used like things like changing gear in your car for the first time sore even like turning even lifting the kettle even like opening your fridge door sore so especially that first day coming home, I'm not gonna be able to get my arms in I think, I'm not gonna be able to reach my arms up, and it's just gonna be easier for the nurses to be able to dress me in a zip up. But it's the only way really, that's why your post-surgery bras fasten all the way down at the front, it's just the only way of life for the few days afterwards. So a tracksuit to come home in, but you want a zip up. And then I'm going to take some underwear in this packing cube. So just some like spanikers and socks. A little vest top. This pack and key, I'm also going to pop my post surgery bras. Now, this is the one that they gave me. You would have seen already when I went for my pre op day and my final consult with Mr. Hussein. So, this is so Macon, by the way. I'm just going to show you. So, this is what they've just given me. This shows how much Macon or Macon, however you say it, are the best. Because here in my underwear drawer are my old Macon garments, which I have kept all this time and they're still the best and still the most recommended by surgeons and cosmetic surgery places. They're such lovely looking things, these post-surgery bras. They basically do up at the front and they have like, this almost looks like a stocking, just allows for like the cone, like your boobs are literally like cones when you first have surgery. And um, so it allows for the swelling, gorgeous, gorgeous. I only need a couple of toiletry bags. So in this one here, I have just packed a shitload of contact lenses and my glasses. Now I am absolutely blind as a bat because I just am. I've got really, really bad eyesight. Like people say they have bad eyesight and then there's mine. It's been that way since I was a kid. Now, the worst thing you can do if you're a contact lens wearer, obviously you have to take your contacts out before surgery, right? Because your eyes go into the back of your head and whatnot. Remember your specs. Like remember your specs because you're not gonna be able to put your contact lenses in obviously straight away and you're gonna want to be able to see and like if you're like me and you never wear your glasses it's very easy to forget to take them places okay. so remember your you okay monkey remember your spectacles um 
that was actually the most annoying thing after I got my nose done actually because obviously I woke up with the cast on and I couldn't get my glasses to sit on my face and obviously I couldn't get my lenses in because I was like all out of it but yes remember your glasses and your contact lens wear and then I've also just popped my contraceptive pill in here as well and then in here is just like makeup wipes deodorant toothpaste dry shampoo I'll put my toothbrush in there and a body moisturiser which I'll shove this one in here and then I am also going to take so I'll put my hairbrush in and I'm pretty sure they don't let you have uh, bobbles with metal on so I'm just going to take some of the like silk little scrunchies and some bobbles but yeah it's quite actually an easy bag to pack um the most important thing to remember is your post-surgery garments and then just your um documents I like to have a read of these on my way into the hospital on the morning just to make sure that we're all good to go I'll look the pre-op nurse bless her even put um remember dressing gown and slippers or sliders she even wrote that on my blesser. Once I've packed my bag to go to my friend's house, which is just a boring bit that you don't want to see, I'm going to just like prep my bedside because obviously tonight's like my last night here before I get back. So I'm just going to prep like my bedside table um, to make sure that I've got everything on a table next to me that I need. So I will show you what I do for that. Good morning. It's actually the next day and it's 7am. I am 24 hours before surgery, I'll be getting admitted at 7.30 tomorrow and I'm literally just about to set off from my friend's house, I think I've already explained, I'm spending the day with her today, staying at hers and her boyfriend's tonight because they're taking me to the hospital in the morning. Honestly like the logistics when you're a one man band and you don't really have like a partner or anyone to like look after you after surgery is so funny because obviously I don't want to take my car so then I'm going to be leaving it at my friend's house so I've got my brother taking me in his works van to drop me off at my friend's house this morning. Chloe's taking me there and then another friend of mine that I was actually with for dinner last night is picking me up and bringing me back here um tomorrow evening so think about the logistics if you're a one-man band if you're on your own in this life then think about the logistics well in advance because everyone knows their time and like where they need to be and thank god I planned it that way anyway just quickly before I go I just want to show you like how I've prepped my bedside literally ready for me to get back into when I get back from hospital tomorrow evening so this is how we're looking I know this is so funny also my dog is still in bed there on the bed this is actually my desk from downstairs and it's one of those working desks where you can have it like up at like walking or standing high and down and honestly what a godsend it's just from amazon and it's on wheels so it's actually perfect for my bedside post op so i've got my v pillow here i'm literally stationed to just get straight in there um v pillows after surgery this is one that i've literally had for years and i've kept it just gets you through sleeping basically because you have to sleep sitting upright pretty much until you can start laying down a bit more the pillows all the way forward i think this one's on like george astor but you can get like the plain ones like normal pillowcase ones get them anywhere amazon argos literally anywhere they're not like a specific post-surgery thing i think they're more like a pregnancy thing but they're a godsend regardless so on this little bedside table i've got my laptop and my card reader ready for when I can actually do some work. I've got a box of tissues always handy. I've got my little phone holder. I've got this, which I have literally filled to the brim, even with ice already, which will probably still be that cold when I get back. I've got my two TV remotes there. I've got a coaster as well, which obviously will have my cup of tea on. Like I'll just move my flask and stuff out of the way whenever I want a brew. I've got my remotes and my telly ready. And then this, oh, I've got my sleep mask because I don't sleep without one of those. This is like my wellness basket so i've got like wipes i've got pampers obviously i can't really bath myself can't get my bandages wet and i've got no one really to help me so i've got pampers i've got fem fresh because we stand fem fresh here i've got some antibacterial wipes on my hands i've got um simple cleansing wipes on my face i've got a clip hairbrush all of my contact lenses some bits of skincare and deodorant and just some pillow spray so this is just like my little like easy to find like skin stuff do you know what i mean so i can just quickly grab it and then in here i have got paracetamol antihistamines i've got my bio oil obviously for my scarring i've also got the vitamin e oil from Superdrug, which is one of my favorites post-op i have got some arnica which i know is like a natural remedy but it's something that i've taken for every cosmetic surgery i've had so far and it has helped so much with my swelling and bruising i've also got things like some cbd oil um some rescue remedy in here just to like chill me out if i need it and then i've got some sugar-free polos great tip if you're going to be sent home from codeine which chances are i'm going to be they constipate you and laxatives aren't great because then obviously you're on the toilet toilet but polos sugar-free polos are like a natural laxative that just gets the bowels moving doesn't make you have like runny poo sorry tmi but will just keep your bowels moving i got this tip from my mum a long time ago sugar-free mints sugar-free polos ideally are just the best so i've got some of those in there ready to go and then i've just got some probiotics 
which will just help with my recovery and I take every day anyway. And then I've also got some ashwagandha, which will help with my sleep. Again, something I take every day anyway, as you can see. Um, and obviously any meds and dressings and stuff that they send me home with, I will just pop in here as well. But yeah, this is my little bedside situation, all ready to go for when I get back. Morning. Oh. It's the day of my surgery. And I'm not feeling nervous, particularly. However, I'm at my friend's house, by the way. <laughs> I woke up here. Um, I've got a bit of a bad stomach. Not a bad stomach, but like a nervy stomach. I'll be glad to be put to sleep by well. I don't know how I'm feeling. Love you, Chloe. Bye. We're here. It's very quiet here at this time of morning. Okay, guys, I'm in after a long chat with my lovely nurse because we just ended up nattering. But you get your own little private room, and there's a TV, and then this is my little bathroom. Just all of the standard things that you see in a hospital room. Um, I'm just packing, unpacking, sorry, um, my bag and then I need to get my gown on because the anaesthetist and the surgeon will be here soon. So I've only got 10 minutes to sort myself out because I am first on the list. So I'll probably be asleep by about eight o'clock. Yes, yeah, fine. Is it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a little bit here. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, how are you? I'm good, good. Do you have any caps or crumbs or tea? Uh, no. Any other I've got like composite veneers, but... That's fine. Any other medical problems? No. I think you may have to have them off before yeah. you go down and out. Have you seen the anesthetist already? Uh, yes. Yeah. You discussed the drains, yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 The best we can do is put it underneath yeah. the muscle, but yeah, it depends on how thick your muscle is. If yeah. your muscle is still quite thin, then... There's nothing we can do about it. Right guys, I'm heading into theatre, so I'll see you all on the flip side. Mm. Well, well, well. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I, it is now 4pm. My friend Daniela is on her way to come and get me. Um. Mm. First of all, I would just quite like to say I've had all of the nurses in stitches because I brought my own Yorkshire tea bags and they think that's hilarious. So obviously right now I'm back in my own little room. Um, so I actually got put to sleep, I think it was around 8.30 and it was a two and a half hour operation of 8, 9, 10, 11. So they must have been waking me up in recovery around quarter past 11, um, 11 quarter past. Um, Everything went well, and um, so obviously you stay in recovery. And then I have like, I was completely out of it, but I have like a slight memory of when I was coming round and I was getting like, onto this bed and I was so cold. I was like shivering and shaking. I feel like I feel quite groggy. I felt a lot worse waking up. The first time round was a breeze. If you're having a BA for the first time, sorry, I feel like I'm all over the place. An absolute breeze. I was 18, spring chicken is what it is when i had my rhinoplasty a couple of years ago i woke up feeling groggy emotional and that lasted literally pretty much until 24 hours later it's on your face though and honestly that's a whole different kettle of emotions um this time around i woke up i sobbed i was shivering i sobbed i was so emotional i was asking for my mum and no one is here so she's four hours away in cardiff where she lives so i've managed to have a wee twice and i've managed to um have a little bit of something to eat nothing crazy but i'm feeling quite sick they have given me some anti-sickness tablets um and i've got a sick bowl here just in case because i feel like that could potentially happen um so so far the anaesthetist has been in to see me to have a little chat to me about what went down and then i've also seen mr hussein who took my bra off had a little look he did say it was actually quite a complex procedure um it always or not always i, I don't know but like it always is um hit and miss I guess when you have revision surgery because the first time around you've literally 
got your empty breast pocket other than your actual breast tissue so you're pretty much good to go from the offset whereas this was quite breathless this was obviously an explant then he had to get he had to do the capsulectomy which is getting rid of all the scar tissue and that's where i lost quite a lot of blood um before obviously he gave me like a basically said he gave me like a service like hoovered me out got it as close to you know looking fresh as possible and then pop the new ones in now he said that my muscle's quite thin obviously i've gone under the muscle this time he said my muscle's quite thin so it was hard getting the implant to stay in obviously before he um stitched you back up and the more you're fiddling with it the more swell swollen you get in um but he did it so it all went to plan what we'd actually planned beforehand um and i've now got a drain you can probably see here maybe potentially um i've got a drain coming out of each side now the reason for the drain why you don't have them the first time round is because of the capsulectomy that's why you lose your blood and if you didn't put the drains in then all the blood that i'm staring at right now in the little bags on either side would be happening inside my body so yeah thank god he's done that um look away now if you don't like blood but i feel like i'll just pick up one they've been teaching me how to empty them into the bag and stuff trigger warning for blood so it looks like this coming out of each side sorry i look absolutely out of it but allow it allow it i've just been cut open um so the blood goes into there and then you like release it with the clip squeeze it and then it goes down into the bag they're going to give me some new bags before i go home you can only have these in for literally 48 hours so i will be back on saturday to have them taken out um but hopefully by then the bleeding would have clotted and stopped so i'm so so happy with them my left one in particular is very 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 swollen but that was where i had the worst uh, capsule in my implant oh it's starting to feel a bit sick hey jk i've just woke up from a napping so i will check you're okay well they said just go to reception and then they'll bring you up to my room um, and then she needs to change my bag on the end of my drain. Yeah, it's quarter to five, though, isn't it? Everyone's leaving work. I know, yeah. Oh, don't worry. Well, I'm literally not like I'm going anywhere, so. Do you know what? I feel all right. She's just giving me some paracetamol now because she said I had codeine earlier and she said save the, save the codeine for when you get in bed later. Um, and she's. She, she's so nice, the nurse, Daniela. She's really lovely. Yeah, oh, little, it's the drain for me. Let me no. just move my blood out there. Oh, oh my. <laughs> it's my breast surgery. Guys, Daniela got me a colouring book and it says, New tits, who dis? <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I'll flick through it. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the best thing ever. Watch me frame every single one of these around the house. My dad had some from his knee up. And it's like a clear thing you put over it. Oh my god, that'll like be amazing. Helps get rid of the scar. Because that's what I'd got. Oh my god, the old pus. <laughs> I saw it ages ago. Oh, you're so oh. cute. Thank you. Come in. I fell asleep with my glasses on. Did you want it just there? Yeah, yeah, just. Mm. Oh, it's and I've left a um, bag at Chloe's. Oh, okay. <laughs> you will have it up home when well, I got home a while ago I managed a little bit of cheese on toast and um I've had like something fizzy to drink which felt so nice I am now in bed I'm situated on my v pillow which I prepped and all of my preps were great and my sister-in-law added some chocolate and stuff to my little bedside which is very nice of her um I'm sore I'm I'm sore I'm feeling it now. So I had codeine when I came around. I didn't want to. They offered it me because I can take it four times a day. Didn't want to take codeine for the journey home. I just took paracetamol. Um, and then I am going to take codeine now before I go to sleep. The way they feel. I mean, my left one's quite swollen on the outside. But I mean, I've literally just had it done. But the good thing is, is obviously I have a comparison in my mind of how it was the first time. So I'm very aware of what feels normal and what doesn't. And... Um, I think feels normal right now my nipples are swollen like traffic cones which is just normal um and I'm really really happy with how they look on my frame I feel like they actually look so much more natural because they're under the muscle which you know I'm gonna have these now until I'm mid 40s so the huge gigantic stuck on tits were great um but it's now time that they're under the muscle and I can be a bit more a bit more subtle with it my drains are hang on let me turn you around my dog is here He's like, Mum, what is going on? And then my drains. 
or here, one on each side of course, that's my uh, phone light. Um, one on each side and I put a lot of water retention in like my stomach area and also in my face as well, I can see it's a bit puffy and swollen. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stick friends on, just something easy to watch in the background. Get my head back and just try and rest, I'm a bit breathless now, but it's a bit tight chested so obviously good morning. Saturday the 11th of May, so I'm two days post-op. Um, yesterday my first full day after surgery was rough, I'm not going to lie. But it always is the first full day, like when the morphine and anaesthetic and everything is flushed out of your system and you're relying on like oral painkillers, like it's never easy. Um, and sleeping upright is honestly one of the most annoying things. Like I've done it twice before, like when I had my boobs done the first time, obviously, and when I had my nose done and it's just not comfortable, like it hurts your back, especially, especially at this age. I'm not spring chicken anymore. Um, but other than that, I'm feeling okay. The only thing is that I cannot wait to get these drains out today guys um i'll show you how they're looking to be fair i need to like empty them um because you squeeze from there down into there um, and obviously i have one on each side and like where the painkillers have worn off now like the morphine i mean i can actually feel where they are like where they're going in and like where they're kind of sitting like uncomfortably like the tube on the inside i have i was going to say managed to freshen myself up a bit I've failed at the dry shampoo thing, look, because I've barely even rubbed it in, but it's the best I could do right now. Um, I've got the best doctor in the world. My little chihuahua here. My veggies and hot seat steaks, obviously I've got all my stuff next to me. Then it's been so hot as well, like what a day for like your first two days of recovery because it's been so warm. So I've got the Dyson fan on, which is actually more for the dog than me. Um, but yeah, I'm actually doing okay and... I don't know if I'm going to vlog getting the drains out because I don't think it's going to be something that is is okay to be on YouTube to be honest like I think there's going to, it's going to be quite gruesome um but I just wanted to give you a little update on the drains before I actually went and had them removed I mean they did say they'll see how much blood is in them depending on whether they'll take them out or not and I do feel like I'm still losing quite a bit of blood so I just really hope that they can actually take them out because like I said I feel like I'm going to be sat so much more comfortable um my dad will be here any minute and we're just gonna like he's got loads of time we don't need to leave for a couple of hours so we're just gonna have some food um and i can just slowly get dressed i remember like my first boob job i was like taking my bra off like looking at them like really excited to see how they were and like this time around obviously like the novelty is slightly wore off but like it's so important to keep your compression garments on so I've got dog hairs on my face sorry so um yeah i know that i just need to leave them alone let them do their thing i'm dying to have like an everything shower and i tell you i don't ever let my armpits even get the tiniest sprout of hair obviously i can't shave them because i can't really lift them up to get in there i'm dying to wash my hair like anyone that's having an everything shower today i am so so jealous so jealous um but anyway i'm gonna actually get up now and get myself sorted but as far as like how I'm looking, I feel like they just look so much better suited to my body than my last implant. Well, update now that I'm up and about. Oh, it's very breathless. It's very, I'm very, can't even speak straight. My dad's just got here, so I'm going to attempt to put a tracksuit on. Such a gorgeous day though. Um, and then get myself to hopefully have my drains taken out. Back in bed, which I couldn't wait to get back in bed. So they took my drains out. Um, drain free, guys. I'm so bloated. I've actually got um got a greens smoothie which are like pre well they're like smoothie mixes that I bought from Sainsbury's which are prep ones. I thought I'd just have some greens. I had some yesterday and hopefully get my bowels moving because codeine constipates you so much. Sorry TMI but it's the truth. Um anyway. I didn't vlog any of my drain appointment. I don't think I'll be forgetting that feeling for a long time. My stepmom came in with me to the appointment, luckily. But honestly, I'm not a baby at all. Like, I have a really high pain threshold, but that was the weirdest feeling. It was such a... I said to the nurse when I sat down, I was like, is this going to be painful? And she said, I'm not going to lie. She said, it's just a really gross feeling. And boy, she was not wrong. Sorry, I've got the fan on, so it's quite loud. The length of the cord of the drain inside my boob I didn't realise was that long so she cut these stitches which because they were stitched into me 
she did one side first and she cut the stitches obviously took my bra off I didn't I didn't have a proper look so I've got a wound check on Thursday next Thursday and that's when I want to see them for the first time properly when the swelling's gone down a bit more give it a few more days so I just laid on the bed um and she cut the stitches and then she said take a really deep breath so I took a deep breath and then she's like when I say one two three just breathe as deep as you can outwards and that's what she did and as I was breathing outwards that's when she pulled the cord so it literally pulls and it like unswiveled it was like wrapped I thought it would only be a little bit on the inside I don't know why I was just really naive um but yeah it wasn't nice but they're out now and I actually feel a bit more free I must admit I'm in a bit of pain I'll probably get my head down because I'm knackered it's such a gorgeous weekend I've literally just said on my Instagram story I hope everybody's out enjoying the sunshine because it is such a nice bloody day. And what I would do to be in a beer garden right now. And yeah, now me and the dog are just chilling. It's really hot for the dog as well. Oh God, I'm knackered guys, to be honest. It really takes out of you. Like, general anesthetic. The nurse said to me, she was like, Asha, like, you're being so hard on yourself. I sat on the bed and I was like, God, I'm so knackered. And when I lay back and like my bra was off, I was like, oh, this is just so nice for a minute. Obviously I know it needs to go straight back on, but I was like, let me just have this five minutes. And I was like, my body is just exhausted. And she was like, yeah, but it's general anaesthetic. Like, you're literally day two post-op. Like, you should be in bed. And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I think just because it's sunny and everyone's out and about, I'm, like, kicking myself a little bit. I feel like I should be up and about. But obviously, I can't be. That is bumping my dog snoring, by the way. He is absolutely loving life right now because bed is his favourite place. I'm in bed in the middle of the day and we've got the Dyson fan on just for him really, it's not even for me. I feel like a new woman because my friend Chloe has washed my hair for me this morning and we're about to set off for my post-op appointment, so I'm a uh, post-op wound check. I'm officially, I'm officially one week post-op today so it's my last day of my antibiotics. Officially not taking codeine anymore for the pain, just managing on paracetamol. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the nurse has to say as well today about my wounds, obviously, where your wounds sit like under your, almost like under your implant really, and then eventually over time they get covered more when they drop and like fluff out a little bit. Um, it's hard to see them. I mean, I've got my dressing dressings on still obviously, but yeah, it's hard to like see them in the mirror and stuff. So just excited to hear if they're healing okay, because I really want to start using like some scar cream, um, but I can only do that if they're like dry and you know, nothing's weeping and nothing's still open. So we'll have a little look. I'd like to have a proper little look at them. We'll be there in about 50 minutes and then we're gonna go and grab some lunch afterwards because we are ravenous. Um, but yeah, let's hope that everything's okay with my wounds. I literally haven't seen them yet. I'm gonna see if she'll take like a picture underneath so I can basically see what they're like properly. And then if it's no nipple on show, I'll put that picture in at some point here. Washing my hair has made me feel a lot better. And I've put a little bit of makeup on, which always makes everybody feel a little bit brighter. We were just saying how amazing your hair is out there. Oh, is it, it is. Nine days of shots. Trim that suture down and then... So you've got a lot of seam glue on there. Um, so once you get in the shower, the warm water should help just lift it off. I'm not going to try and pick too much of it yeah, off because I don't want to disturb cool. the healing or anything. So just let it do its own thing. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come in. We're done. And the suture material that was kind of sticking out, I've just tried to trim it down. It is Saturday the 1st of June and it is three week post-op checkup day. I am seeing Mr. Hussain at three weeks and at six weeks and then probably again at around 10 weeks where hopefully he'll give me the go ahead for some exercise and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just in Costa Drive through heading to Pall Mall in Newton and Willows and I'm really excited actually for today's appointment because I just want to see what he has to say. Obviously this is the first time he's seeing them since my actual surgery day. So I just want to see in his opinion like how he thinks they're healing and stuff. Um, so I was technically three weeks post-op on Thursday. So he's just got a clinic on the Saturday. So um, three weeks and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two days. Three weeks and two days post-op um, and I'm feeling good. I feel really, really great about them. I mean I don't look great right now. I've just literally rushed out of the house, had a quick shower and got no makeup on. but. I'm feeling really good in myself. I'm so unbelievably happy with how they look. Like, I can't even explain. Anyway, yeah, I'm really, really excited to see how he thinks that they are. Um, I just, like, I always love this appointment post-op, like, your first one where, like, you're feeling back in yourself because you can have, like, a really good conversation with the consultant about, like, where you're up to in your recovery. So it's normally a really insightful... Um, appointment which is exciting cheers gorgeous people so hopefully a successful three-week post-op appointment wow 
that is sensational. We're back. I'm actually excited to see how I'm getting on. Don't worry, it's not. I was just interested to see. Yeah, it took some. I have no idea. Oh yeah, there you go. That's crazy. Yeah. So this. Oh my god. So these are the implants that were there. You can see quite yellow, and these are the capsules. Yeah, so anybody, can I check that? Yeah. Out? I'll show them. That's crazy. Oh, so that's what you removed from these around. Are the, yeah. So this is from in front of the breast and so on. So what happens is this is scar, so it just shrivels down. God, look how yellow they go when they yeah. feel inside you. That's crazy. And what? So this is like the capsule ectomy. Yeah, so these are the capsules. So what happens is that once you remove it, it's tight. So imagine that is containing, is shriveling the breath, yeah. the implant inside it, and so wow, on. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, so that was the improper effect. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, so the, uh, the left side, I remember, I think this is the right and this is the left. Yeah. So the left side, I, it was swollen even on yeah, the right. Yeah, even really the first tight. time yeah. I got them done, my left one was done. They feel so different though, yeah, compared to last yeah. time. Yeah. But they look so they look so much different, which is crazy because I didn't think they would look... No, I think it's just, that's why the good thing is when I change this pocket, change yeah. the frame. Uh, you can because, really tell the difference. You can tell, because I think it's just before, the only thing that was holding the implant to your body was the skin. The skin. And the skin... Which which is why they sat where they yeah. did. So now what you do is that the implant, putting it underneath the muscle, the implant holds it against yeah. your body. So it always, almost in a way, age proofs it a well, bit as well. Yeah. Because as you age, your skin will thin. So yeah. you lose the. Well, ability. it already has in the 12 yeah. years that I have the yeah. name. So. So, that, so now you've got muscle holding things back. And hopefully, and the other thing is it's got a smoother take Yeah, the I can already tell they sit yeah. so much almost like flatter up top. Yeah, so. It felt like I could always get my fingers behind my implant before, yeah. whereas I can't at all yeah, even so. tell where it starts and yeah. ends. So that's where the idea is that you're going to put it uh, underneath the muscle. Yeah. So that's where the trick is with these is that because you've already got a space in front of it, where in front of the muscle where the previous implant was sitting, so then to lift the muscle and to stick it to the breast, yeah. that's where the... The, the placement the, it makes such a difference, yeah. doesn't it? It's I crazy. think that's where uh, most of my patients, well, the first time I do the surgery now, even if they're young, I just go for a yeah. dual plane. I just put it I'm not there. surprised. Yeah, because it just gives me such a better result yeah. than the other way around. Is it okay if we have a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Oh, I've got a lot more sensation now than I yeah. used to have, which feels so weird. Yeah, okay, good, good. But no, I think really good. So what I want to... Take things easy still, yeah. because I think what will happen is that, yes, it will get a lot better. Yeah. I think, yeah, like you say, the swelling still here. Yeah. I can feel it. Oh, it looks they really they feel great. Yeah. I think it really looks really natural. So I think, especially when you now wear a bra, yeah. uh, it will look like you've got natural sort of yeah. like cleavage rather than implants. Yeah, no, I agree. Right. I don't need to be covering the scar or anything. Uh, I think just use a bit of gauze, because I think when you lie, okay. down, lie down for a second, just so I can have a little bit better look. This just on this side. This, this on this side. We'll give you some gauze. Okay. So in the bra, just put a bit of padding underneath okay. it. Okay. So is it like, will it, will it ooze? I know. Okay. If it's not oozed before, it's not going to ooze. No. But it's just that, uh, what's it called? Just to keep pressure off it, that's why I'm using Oh, right, that. okay. But it should knit together. Okay? It should, yeah. It should knit together. Because okay. I think it's just, there's nothing coming from it. There's no problems with it. So I think it just will give you some gauze. So yeah. in the bra, so it's just act as a little bit of padding on the scar. Amazing. Yeah. It should have another appointment at the end around six weeks or something yeah, like that. Yeah, six weeks. Come and see me again. And I'm still... Still take things easy. Okay. Yeah, because it's quite a lot of work. Okay. And like I said to you, what I've done is that I've had to stick the muscle to the underside of the breast. So if you start doing too much too quickly, yeah. it'll just rip that Maybe muscle off. very cautious. Even when I'm changing gear in the car, yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why, because anything you do, the muscle can Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So but no, it feels like to crazy. You, so. To you. so that's why. So taking things easy, no gym exercise. I would suggest maybe no gym exercise for you for a good another maybe I usually say six weeks but in your case maybe like eight to ten yeah. weeks. Yeah, I'll just wait as long as yeah. it takes. It's because yeah, so I think you just let everything settle yeah. down. I am home and I'm just going to round up this vlog um, by showing you something that has been so helpful to me. So this is a delivery that I've had today. It's called Scar Sill, but this is the empty one. I mean, I've cut the top to get the drugs of it out. Um, I haven't used it for one of these. I only started using it after my wound check with the nurse and it was all dry and she took the dressings off completely. Um, I started using this and my sister-in-law gave me this because she had surgery at the beginning of this year and had like a little bit left over. So she told me to try and see how I get on with it. It is unreal. So I ordered a new one and I ordered it off like this pharmacy website. Um, she can't really just go and buy it like boots. I mean, it's 30 mil and it's about 20 something pounds. So it's not the cheapest, but it's a silicone gel and it works absolute wonders. Like when Mr. Hussain saw my scars today, he was like, God, they're healing really, really well. I've got like one bit that's still like not healing as fast on my right B 
boob and he told me to just, it's weird though, because I thought it would be my left, if anything, but yeah, he told me to just keep a gauze on it, which is what he gave me, just to make sure it's like not catching or anything. Um, but yeah, this is the stuff that I'm going to continue to use on my scarring going forward. So just wanted to share that. Anybody that is just watching this purely for surgery purposes and because you're thinking of having this procedure done or whatever, I will in a few weeks, few months time, whenever I've got updates, whether it's amongst other vlogs or if I do like any big updates regarding surgery, I will put links to those videos in the description box down below if you're watching this in the future so you can quickly go and find them. But for anyone else who's just a usual vlogging member here, then it's great to be back. And now that my, the, the worst part of my recovery is out of the way, it's good to be back vlogging again um, and being back here on YouTube every Sunday. So you guys, I will see you all in next week's video.